Okay, so last week you guys um, spent some time going through Pascal's triangle and binomial theorem, and I know some of you were able to watch the video that I made, um, but a lot of you weren't able to, so I want to go through a couple more of these examples um, of how we can use Pascal's triangle in order to expand um, binomial problems, okay? So remember, a binomial expansion happens when we have a binomial, okay? So that is a two-term polynomial. A lot of times it's going to be x plus or minus something, okay? So let's just take x minus 3 is the binomial that we want to use. Um, what we'll see in some problems is that we need to, to take these to a certain power and expand them out, okay? So it's pretty easy for us if we went to the 2 power, but what happens if we go higher than 2, okay? What happens if instead of 2, we wanted to go to maybe the uh, fourth power? Well, it would kind of be annoying and just repetitive to have to multiply x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3, right? We'd have to do that over and over and over again. We'd have to use FOIL th three times. We'd have to use box method three times. So there is an easier way for us to do this. Um, and that's where Pascal's triangle comes in. So Pascal's triangle, if we remember here, um, starts at the top with 1. And this corresponds with an exponent, okay, an exponent of 0. Okay, so I'm going to write just exponent, let's do exp, and it's going to be at level 0, okay? And then our second level, though, is we have at 1 and 1, okay? So that's if we have an exponent 1. That means that our binomial, if we took it to the 1 power, these terms here, both these terms, the second and um, the first and the second term would have a coefficients of 1, okay? Remember, Pascal's triangle, these are coefficients. These are coefficients. So now if I'm going to level 2 here, level 2 is actually going to be a 1, 2, and 1. So when we multiply this out, if we were to take this to the second power, our resulting polynomial would have three terms, and the coefficients would be 1, 2, and then 1, okay? And we can also see here that to construct this um, triangle, we can just add the two that are directly above and that will produce the one below. Okay, so if I want to make the third level now of this, the third level here, I'm going to start with a one. Okay, I'm always starting with one and then I go, okay, one and two makes three. So I'll write that right there underneath and then I have two and one that also makes three. So I'll write that there and then I'll end with a one as well. Okay, because one just corresponds down to one. So there I just made my third level. And this happens for every case. If you have a binomial and you take it to the third power, you're going to end up with a four-term polynomial, and it's going to have um, coefficients of one for the first term, three for the second term, three for the third, and then one for the fourth. So let's go ahead and take it to the fourth power, because that's where we need to be based on this. So once again, I'm starting with one here, and one plus three is four, three plus three is six, 3 plus 1 is 4 again, and then we end with a 1 here. So this keeps going on forever. We can go as long as we want um, down this. So let's go ahead and actually do this problem here, okay? Let's do this problem. So I see that I have x minus 3 to the fourth power. That's what I need to get to, okay? I need to expand that out. So I'm going to go ahead and look at Pascal's triangle and go down to my fourth level here. Well, I already have my fourth level. I just wrote it. And I see that my coefficients are going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that pretty big across my page, okay? So just so that I have lots of room to work with. So 1, 4, 6, 4, and then finally 1 here. All right, so now that I have my coefficients written out, now I have to start dealing with my terms inside here, okay? My terms inside here. So I have x squared. I'm sorry, I have x here. Okay, so that's my first term, and I'm going to start with that one. So always start with the first term here, and I'm going to write that right there by the 1 coefficient, okay? And what I want to do is I'm actually going to start with the first term to my exponent that I want to take it to. So in this case, to the fourth power, x to the fourth power there. I'm then going to take that first term and write it again next to my next coefficient, but this time I'm going to do it to the third power. So my exponents are going to descend here by 1 as I move along. Then I'm going to go to the sixth coefficient, I'm going to put the x near, near it, and then I'm going to go to the second power. And then I'm going to go to the 4, and I'm going to have x, and that's going to go to the first power. 
And then over here, I'm going to have x, and that's going to be to the 0 power. So see, I've gone down. I've gone x4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. Now I'm going to take my second term here. This is negative 3, right? We have a negative sign here. We have to include that. We have to include that operation there. So it's a negative 3. And I'm going to write right here next to the 1 and the x to the 4, negative 3. But instead of going down with my exponents like I did here, I'm instead going to go up. So I'm going to start at 0, and then I'm going to work my way up to 4 as I move across. So I have negative 3 to the 0 right there. Negative 3, sorry that's a little sloppy, to the 1 right there. I have negative 3 to the 2 there. And I have negative 3 to the 3. And finally here I have negative 3 to the 4th power. Okay, so now I've written it all out. And in between all of these are just going to be plus signs. These are all going to be added together, okay? These are all just going to be added. So now that we've laid it out like this, we now have to go ahead and start simplifying stuff here, which I can do. So I have negative 3 to the 0. We know that anything to the 0 power is automatically 1, okay? It's 1. So now we have 1 times x to the 4 times 1. 1 times 1 is just 1. 1 times x to the 4 just leaves with x to the 4. So my first term is just going to be x to the 4. Remember, we don't have to write the 1 there. 1 is implied. If there's just x to the 4, if there's just one of them, you just write x to the 4th. All right, so now to the second term here. Now I have negative 3 to the 1. Well, we know that anything to the first power is just itself. So in this case, that's going to be just negative 3. Well, since I have 4 and I have negative 3, I can actually go ahead and multiply those together, and I get negative 12. Okay, I get negative 12. So I have negative 12, and I still have my x to the third right there. x to the third right there. Okay, now let's move on to this one. All right, so now I have negative 3 to the 2. Well, negative 3 to the 2 power is the same as negative 3 times negative 3, and that is a positive 9. And we know that 9 times 6 is going to be 54. And we still have our x squared. So what we have here is we have a positive 54x squared. All right, almost there. Now we're moving on to our fourth term here. We have negative 3 to the third power. So that's negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. And that's going to be negative 27. Okay, and negative 27 we can multiply by 4. And what that's going to give us is that will give us 108, a negative 108, negative 108. So negative 108, and that's going to be 2 with x to the 1 power, right? That just stays the same. And last but not least, here we are. We're at 1, x to the 0. Remember, anything to the 0 is always just going to be 1. So this x to the 0 actually turns into 1. So we have 1 times 1 times negative 3 to the 4. And negative 3 to the 4th power is going to be positive 81. Positive 81 there. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and write that. Positive 81. And that's actually my final polynomial right there. So if I was to expand this out and do box method or FOIL, okay, three different times, expand this all the way out, I would get x to the fourth minus 12x to the three plus 54x squared minus 108x1 plus 81. And that would be my final answer there. Let's go ahead and just do another quick problem here so that we are completely clear on what we're supposed to do here. I'm going to go ahead and just change color. I'm going to go to blue. Um, so let's do something a little bit more difficult for us. Let's do x plus 2y, okay? x plus 2y. And let's take this one to the third power, okay? Let's not go too high there. So x plus 2y to the third power. Well, if I look back up here, at my row, I know my answer is going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. Those are the coefficients for my answer. So once again, I'll just write those real big for me. 1, 3, 
three, and then one there. Okay, so same process. I'm going to take my first term here of the binomial, which is x, start that here, and I'm going to start from with the exponent I'm taking it to, which is three, and I'm going to work my way down. So I have x to the three, I now have x two, I now have x one, and then finally x to the zero. Remember, x to the zero is going to end up equaling one. All right, now I'm going to take my second term, that's 2y. So this is going to be 2y to the 0, right? I start at 0 and work my way up 2y to the 0. And then 2y to the 1. Oops, 2y to the first power. And then I have 2y to the second power. And then I have 2y to the third power. Two y to the third power. There we go. Okay, remember these just have addition signs in between them. Just has addition signs. So now we have to go ahead and simplify this. Um, so when we simplify here, we know that anything to the zero power is just going to be one. So this becomes a one. One times one is one. So we're just left with x to the third. So x to the third is our first term here. Now let's look over here. We have x2, so that, that works very well, and then we have 2y to the 1. Well, I think the 1 power is just itself, so we have 3 times x to the 2 times 2 times y, because 2y is just 2 times y. So we can go ahead and multiply those regular numbers together, 3 and 2, and we get a positive 6. So we have positive 6, and then we have x squared still, and now we have a y variable as well. So 6x squared y. All right. So our third term here, we have 3, we have x to the first, and we have 2y squared. Now, our exponent rule tells us that we have to square each part of this, okay? So that means we have to square 2 and we have to square y. So that means we get 2 squared, which is 4, and y squared. Well, 4 times 3 is a positive 12. So I'm going to have a positive 12 there. I still have my x to the 1. And now I have y2. I have y2 here, y2, excellent. All right, and last but not least, here we have x to the zero. Well, that's just one, so we're not gonna have an x variable here in this term, and we have another one, that's cool. And now we have two y to the third. So we'll go ahead and cube each of these term, each of these pieces here. Two to the three is eight, a positive eight. And y to the three is y to the third. All right, so there is our final polynomial. We have x cubed plus 6x squared y plus 12x1y plus 8y cubed, okay? So that is going to be the final answer if you were to go ahead and FOIL this or box method it all the way out. Okay, so we can see Pascal's triangle is very useful when it comes to this um, for that exact reason.